So the entity's 0.50 update is like the gift that keeps on giving. I mean, right from the beginning, we knew that these new editor windows and inspectors were going to be great because they're a huge improvement over what we had previously. Turns out that it is correct. We also heard some rumblings about this new iJob entity thing, and that turned out to be really cool. Also, I think that having hybrid render version 2 just by default right out of the box is a step in the right direction. But there was one other thing in the new update that I kind of had my eye on and I finally got a chance to play around with. And I definitely am liking what I see so far. And that is the variable rate update group. So the variable rate update group is a new system group, much similar to uh, like the initialization system, the simulation system group, or the presentation system group, where we can kind of organize our systems accordingly. However, the variable rate rate update group is unique because we can have it run on a different time rate than the other systems in our game. So typically all these systems are going to be running every single frame, but what if we have some systems that we only want to run, you know, once every few seconds or once every quarter second or something like that? That is where the variable rate update group comes in. Now, also one thing that I get asked about quite frequently is, you know, how do we make longer running jobs, you know, jobs that can be ran over many frames rather than being completed all within the same frame. Now, with these new variable rate update groups, it makes it possible. I'm not sure it's necessarily the intended use, but I'm going to be showing you how we can run some longer running jobs using these update groups and maybe some things you need to watch out for because you can kind of shoot yourself in the foot if you're not careful, um, you know, similar to much many other things in Unity ECS. So before we get into it, I do just want to put out a couple words of caution. So version 0.50 is the first time that this feature has been uh, publicly available. So just be aware that things may change over time. And so anything stated in this video is definitely subject to change. Um, you know, some features could be added in or changed. Um, and, you know, of course, because this is something that's still in de development, I'm sure the developers are willing to hear your feedback on it. So if there's anything that you want to see, you know, added or changed in these variable rate update groups, definitely, you know, make your voice heard in the comment section of this video or over on the Unity forums. Also, there isn't much real documentation on this feature so far. So most of this that I'm going to be sharing in this video are just things that I've kind of found through experimentation and digging through the APIs. And I would also recommend that you have some understanding about system update order and creating your own custom system groups because this is basically a new feature of all that. Um, I did do a pretty comprehensive video on this topic, so I will leave a link up in the card as well as in the description below so you can check that out. So for starters, what is the variable rate update group? Well, like I mentioned, it basically gives us a way to run systems on a different time step than normal. So typically in Unity ECS, systems are going to run once every frame. Now we can use this variable rate update group to update systems on a slower rate so we can kind of you know space them out for specific jobs that we don't necessarily need running every frame but we do want them to be running on some regular basis. Now this is controlled through a rate manager which is of type I rate manager. Yes you heard that right I rate manager. So using this irate manager, we can pass in the time in milliseconds of how often we want the systems in this group to update. So for example, if we passed in, say, a value of 500, that's going to be 500 milliseconds or half a second. So that means every system under that group is going to be running every single half second rather than every single frame. Now, the way this works is actually a little bit interesting. So the actual base rate group, you know, things that we're assigning systems to, that is of type component system, which has its own basic system lifecycle. So, you know, it has like an update method and, you know, you can assign logic in that update method. It's not necessarily recommended that you do that, um, but it has an update method and that update method is still going to be called every single frame, no matter what we pass into the irate manager. Now, basically the reason for this is because inside that on update function, it's going to basically continue counting up. It's going to keep a counter of, you know, how long it's been since the previous update was triggered. You know, once we get to that value that we specified in the irate manager, then it's going to trigger the update for all systems under that group. And it's going to reset its counter and then continue counting back up to that number. All right, so here we are over in Unity. Unfortunately, I don't really have much of a fancy demo to show off because um, it's actually easier to kind of show this using the um, console and the profiler. However, if you do want to, you know, look at any of the code referenced in this video, I will have a link to that down in the description below. Okay, so let's open up our code editor here and you'll see that I have this test variable rate system. And you'll see that I've added the attribute 
attribute for update and group type of variable rate simulation system group. Now this is a built in group, so we do get it out of the box um, and it does have basically some default values applied to it. So I'll show you what happens when we just um, drop it right into this uh, variable rate simulation system group. Um, you'll see just in the on update function, I'm basically um, just doing a debug log for ticks. So this should just count up, you know, every single time this on update has been called. Um, also, I want to uh, print out the current time as well as the current frame count and then showing you the uh, delta time value. So back over in Unity, let's go ahead and let this run for a little bit. You'll see that it's going pretty quickly here, um, but I'm going to pause execution. So now we're um, right about up to um, in the 90s of how many iterations this went through. So you'll see that um, we did 90 ticks of that system, um, but we're already up on frame count of 1560. And then basically the reason for that is if we take a look at our delta time, our delta time is about 67 milliseconds right now. Um, so that means that, you know, instead of being called every single frame, again, this on update function is only being called about every 67 milliseconds. And actually, if we inspect the code for this variable rate manager, you'll see by default, this is set to a value of 66 milliseconds. So that's basically what we get by default right out of the box. But let's say we want to change that. Maybe we want this to system to run only once every one second. So basically the way we do that, I've done this in the on start running function, um, but basically we're going to go ahead and create a new rate manager and we can do that with this rate utils class dot variable rate manager. And then inside here, this is where we actually pass in the number of milliseconds that we would like to um, have this particular system to run on, as well as a Boolean. And you'll see that this Boolean is true by default, and it basically pushes time into this new variable rate uh, system group. I guess if you set it to false, if you don't need time in your particular group, um, there are some extra efficiencies and optimizations that can be made. So if you don't need time, go ahead and set this to false. Uh, but otherwise, if you do need to be using time within those systems that are in that variable update group, go ahead and pass in true here. So next thing that we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and get the existing system for the variable rate simulation system group, which is, you know, the group that we're running this particular system in here. Once we have a reference to that, we can just go ahead and set the rate manager property equal to that new rate manager. So we'll come back to Unity, go ahead and enter play mode, and you'll see that now the ticks are running much, much slower. So we'll go ahead and pause execution here. And you see that now if we look at the delta times on these, they're just about over one second here. So again, it's going to count up to that one second. You know, once it's just slightly above that, you know, 1000 milliseconds, then it's going to go ahead and run that tick. So anyways, that's kind of the basics of how it works. Now let's actually do something a little bit interesting with it. So of course we can create our own custom update groups here. Um, you'll see that I've created this turbo update group and it just inherits from component system group. Now inside the constructor for the turbo update group, we can just go ahead and set the rate manager using that exact same rate utils dot variable rate manager, again, passing in the values that we want. So in this case, we're gonna have this update group run once every five seconds. Now below here, I've just created this expensive job scheduler and this expensive job scheduler is going to run inside this turbo update group. So again, that means this, you know, everything in this on update function is going to run once every five seconds. Of course, this is all still running on the main thread um, this stuff inside this on update function here basically what's going to happen here is it's going to schedule this expensive job that's going to you know basically just do a bunch of distance calculations between all these random points and then you see you know at the beginning of this we're going to print out begin calculating distances and then I'm going to have a job that runs after this which basically says we're at the end of calculating distances so of course you know the basically the way that we do that is we're going to go ahead and you know create our array of random points here we're going to go ahead and assign that in our job go ahead and schedule our job here and you'll see that now I'm just going to be doing this uh, new post expensive job which basically just you know tells us when the job is complete and we're going to schedule that passing in the expensive dependency here which we got from scheduling that initial job now I should point out um, it's kind of interesting in this case I am using a native array of float threes here um, and I'm just doing an allocator temp job now the allocator temp job is basically supposed to be when you're allocating native arrays that are only going to last four frames or less. Now, when I show you this, this job is actually going to run quite a bit longer than four frames, um, but nothing yells at me. So not sure if that's, um, you know, 
exactly the right thing to do in this case, or if that should be set up as like a, a persistent native array that we kind of dispose afterwards. Um, but you see, I am being a nice boy and disposing my point array when we're uh, complete with that job here. But again, this is kind of an example of a, a long running job. And I'm not exactly sure if this is the intended use case um, for this feature, but hey, it works. All right, so let's go ahead and enter play mode. You're gonna see, um, again, we're going to only going to begin calculating distances once every five seconds. So you'll see um, down in the console here, we see the begin calculating and end calculating. Again, these happen, you know, many frames apart here. So we're gonna go ahead and pause execution. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the profiler. So I've kind of zoomed in on this one location. You'll see that the turbo update group, this is actually going to be running every single frame. So if we go inspect this, you know, again, this update group is, is trying to do updates every single frame. Again, it's just updating that uh, time count. Now you'll see that basically under it, there's no real jobs of any consequence, nothing that we're scheduling under that. However, if we do go to the next frame, you'll see that again, we do have the update group. And then below it, you'll see that we do have the systems that are running in the update group. So in this case, it's the expensive job scheduler. Now we kind of zoom out a little bit and go basically to the end of this job. You'll see right when this job ends, then we go ahead and actually run this expensive job on a worker thread. I've just set my job count to two worker threads for now, just to, um, for ease of debugging here. Uh, but basically you see that this expensive job, you know, if we zoom out a little bit, this is going to continue to run all the way to the end of the frame. In fact, it's going to move over into the next frame. So if we go over into the next frame, it's gonna be there. Um, by the way, if we were to go back up into here, we would not see that expensive job scheduling system because it's not being ran. Again, it's only being ran once every five seconds. And then we can just kind of continually go through here. You'll see that this job is gonna be running for quite a while. And it basically you know, takes up as long as the frame time um, is taking up so it's not like you know slowing down our game in any sense i mean maybe it's has a little bit of an effect on it just because i have you know only two worker threads available to me um, but that is a limitation that i put on myself but anyways you see that you know this is just going on for many many frames um, keep going you know these frames are happening really fast and this is an expensive job so it it does you know take a while to run over time so anyways, let's go ahead and move, zoom in a little bit here. You'll see that this is the end of the expensive job. Right when that expensive job finishes, boom, that post expensive job um, executes. And that's when we actually get that message printed out to the screen there. So again, that is, you know, kind of an example of a, a long running job. But again, you know, <laughs> I, I wouldn't re necessarily recommend doing this if you don't know um, exactly what you're doing, and you're not really all that familiar with job dependencies, um, because you can definitely get yourself into a little bit of a bind. All right, now to give you a little bit of an example of kind of a, a sticky situation you can end up in, I'm going to be showing you how we can do this same kind of thing using an entities for each. So you'll see that I've created this expensive for each. Again, we're updating it in the turbo update group, which is just going to run once every five seconds. And again, we're just doing a bunch of dumb distance calculations for all these random points here. And then at the end, I've created this expensive dependency. And this is basically, you know, going to run after the expensive for each. And it references this same data type of the cur point, And it has a read and write access to that. So that basically means it needs to wait for this job to complete before running this job. So let me just show you how this is working right now. Again, this is just running inside the turbo update group. All right, so anyways, we're just gonna go ahead and enter play mode, let this run for a couple of iterations. It's going to uh, schedule a couple of these entities dot for each operations. And we can just go ahead and stop execution here. Okay, so here we are over in the profiler. Again, we're gonna see something very similar to before where this expensive for each job is just going to you know, run as long as it needs to on any of these worker threads. And we're just gonna kind of follow this down. It's going to take you know a number of frames again. So we can just kind of you know click through all these. All right, and then we're at the end right here, it looks like. And then again, you know, very similar situation the expensive entities for each is going to complete and then the expensive dependency is going to run after that. So that's, you know, basically what we want. You know, we have an all longer running job and then we have some kind of, you know, follow on job that accesses that same data that of course we want to run after that job has been completed. So that's all well and good, but let's get ourselves into trouble here. So instead of updating in the turbo update group, we're gonna go ahead and run it in the simulation system group. 
course, we're going to have to go ahead and comment out that line because that is no longer relevant. So now, I mean, think a little bit about what's going to happen. Remember, the system up simulation system group is running every single frame, and we're accessing that same bit of data. So let's go ahead and run this for a little bit here. We're going to go ahead and you know have a couple of these entities dot for each functions going to be scheduling before we stop execution here. Okay, so here's kind of what's happening here. Again, we're going to be scheduling this job. You see that it's going to you know run on these worker threads, no problem. Let's move over to the next frame and oh wow you see this is taking 139 milliseconds what the heck is going on with that let's kind of zoom back and get a get a big sense of what's going on you see that this frame is taking significantly more than the other frames all these other frames are you know really little in comparison and you see okay it looks like it's happening all in the player loop and we go down, you'll see that we have this expensive dependency and that expensive dependency is forcing a completion on that job. So that means, you know, the next frame after it's scheduled, it's going to force a completion on that job, meaning that that job has to be completed within that frame. So rather than our expensive job, you know, running over several frames, we're actually forcing it to completion in one frame. So then we're going to end up with, you know, some drop frames here and there, which is just not good for, you know, good, clean, smooth player experience. So that's, you know, definitely one way that you kind of get yourself into trouble with these longer running jobs. Now, you know, these longer running jobs may be a topic for another day, but um, I do just kind of want to point out that, you know, you can kind of get away technically um, with doing these stuff using the variable rate update groups, because, you know, again, if you're only going to be accessing the same set of data, you know, once every few seconds, and you can kind of have these jobs running for longer that are accessing that data, just kind of running in the background, you can probably get away with that. But you know, it does get a little bit tricky if you do want to, you know, access that data back on the main thread. So you have to be a little bit clever about, you know, maybe creating a new data component to send that data back. And then once you have that data on the main thread, then you can kind of work with it without affecting anything on these worker threads. So anyways, that's just about going to do it for today's video. You know, I really like these new variable rate update groups. Really excited to see, you know, how they grow and change over time. I would absolutely love to hear your feedback about, you know, what you think about these particular variable rate update groups and how you think they can be improved over time. Anyways, with that, I hope you did enjoy today's video. If you did and you learned something, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button. Also, feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos about Unity's entity component system and their data-oriented technology stack. Of course, if you do have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, you can always leave those down in the comment section below or join us over on Discord over at tmg.dev discord. I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one.